Hi, my fabulous friends. It has been ages since I've done just a little chatty, casual video about decks, and I thought I would just do a little catty, catty, <laughs> chatty. <laughs> this will not be catty, although it could be with me, you never know. I thought I would do a little chatty, casual video about some decks. <clears throat> so I thought I would share what's on my table right now. Actually, not even just decks. Um, I thought I would share what's on my table right now and f highlight my October. This is the only time of year where I use decks that I, um, you know, are specifically for this time of year. And I don't, um, not even necessarily for reading for others, really just for reading for me, or reading in general, posting on Instagram, because it's my favorite time of year. So we'll start with the good old Halloween Oracle, um, because I love this deck. I don't have a lot of Oracle decks that I like, as you know. I probably have maybe four or five that have made the cut, and everybody has seen this deck. I actually did edge it in, um, I don't edge all my decks, but I edge this one in black and orange so that, uh, you know, it alternates. Um, but I really like this for daily readings as a prompt. So, um, you know, yesterday I, I did an Instagram post where I used this, and um, I did one today, I just didn't post it on Instagram. But it's a deck that I think artistically is really nice, and oh, this is the card that was my prompt yesterday. This is what I picked, was the Skull of Darkness from Blind Spots. I think that, um, I like that it's just sort of a really cool image and then a really practical keyword. I will say I did take one of the cards out of this deck, the Midnight card, because I just didn't really feel it useful. It was the only one that I felt that way about. <clears throat> but everything else I kept, and um, I do like it. And again, I only, I, I only take it out at this time of year. And actually, I have to say, there's something really nice. I took this out yesterday, because today's the second along with the Halloween Tarot and the Robert M. Place Vampire Tarot, um, which I'll bring out in a second. But um, there's something, it's, you know, I said on Instagram, it was like, it's like um, opening the family Christmas decorations every year. Um, it's just sort of a, it's, it's initially I sort of <clears throat> felt like, oh, I wish I used these more, but I actually don't. I like that I, um... I like that I make, you know, save these for October. And um, I actually made Barmbrack last year, which uh, is incredibly good. I just want to point that out. If I remember, I'll try to put a picture of what it looked like, but it was really yummy. Um, yeah, so here's the Halloween Oracle. Everyone's seen it. I don't particularly like the backs. I don't think anyone really does. I've seen it edged. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I've seen it... Um, rebacked with various things and it looks cool but I don't it's it's a lot you know rebacking things I've only done it on one deck and it's it's a little bit of a pain but so I use this um quite a bit and uh you know for glossy cardstock and for cards these large I actually find that it side shows really nicely so I am a fan of that deck so I'll put her back where she lives um, another deck that I'm a fan of at this time of year. Should I do all the Halloween stuff first? No, let's, um, eh, whatever. Let's do, let's do it anyway. Because this is, to me, is one of my favorites anyway. Um, <clears throat> so this is obviously the Robert M. Place Vampire Tarot. Um, the only vampire deck I own, because I generally don't like themed decks. Um, this is a deck I longed for. Actually, if you, got, you if you go back... A year or two in my channel, you can see at some point in the summer, I, I managed to find this deck on eBay really affordably. It lacked the book, but I said, what the hell? Um, you do want the book, I will say, if you get this deck. Um, if you find it used um, and you're tempted, you know, get it, but you're going to want the book at some point. Now, I have a great, wonderful tarot person in my life who did an incredibly generous trade with me, who happened to have an extra copy of the book, and <clears throat> so I did wind up with the book. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I just ate Thai, really spicy Thai food, <laughs> so my sinuses are all awake and running. Um, when you look at the majors in particular, it helps to have Roger M. Places, Roger, Ro Robert M. Places 
description of why things are the way they are. For example, uh, you'll see Mina as the high priest, uh, high priestess, I think. Uh, and it's, it's really particular to why he chose that. And once you know, it makes sense. But before that, you sort of think, ah. yeah, here she is as the high priestess. And it has to do with the fact that, um, she's the only, in the, in the story of Dracula, she's the only one of the hunters, you know, in the last third of the book who, who knows where Dracula is because after he bites her, they are psychically connected. So, um, she, she's the, the one who's able to use her inner knowledge to find and ultimately slay him. So this really easily could have been called the Dracula Tarot because it, it really is pr principally focused on Bram Stoker's, uh, vampire mythology. But again, when you read the book, you definitely get a sense of the precursors, the forerunners, uh, to, to the, the mythology that Bram Stoker used. So it's just a really good book. It's really beautiful art. I think, you know, this is my favorite of his decks, honestly. I do love the Buddha Tarot, which also was gifted to me by the same person who traded the book. I mean, your art tarot guardian angels out there are kind of amazing. <clears throat> I also love that the my, uh, the um, core cards in this deck are real people or real characters, um, not necessarily uh, life characters. One of the one of the core cards represents a really early iteration of the vampire mythology. But um, he also includes Pamela Coleman Smith in here as one of the core cards, which we've always loved. And I've said this before, but um, Bela Lugosi as Dracula was one of my earliest crushes, so... so. Ellen Terry was an actress who um, was friends with Pamela Coleman Smith. I just love the, the thought that he puts into his decks. I love that it's slightly a pit deck and slightly not. You know, I love the way he does that. Um, I really would love to see from him a Marseille style deck. I, I thought he had one or was working on one, so I, would, I, I hope that happens and then I didn't miss it. But um, that's the Vampire Tower, which I longed for for many years and I'm very happy to have. And uh, really like, I've you know... I've seen it trend and it looks really good, but I sort of, I kind of like it the way that it is. You know, I've seen the edge, of, like this has sharp corners, but it, I don't mind that on this deck. It sort of feels appropriate that this deck would bite. Um, <clears throat> uh, so the, the only other sort of Halloween specific deck um, that I, I have is the Halloween Tarot. Um, which, oh. If Liz watches this, I have our pine cones on my deck. This is from the Reader's Studio. Um, so the Halloween Tarot is like the OG Halloween deck. I love it so much. Um, <laughs> it's just a, you know, people talk about hug decks. I guess this would be a hug deck for me because I just really love it's playful and cute, and it gives good readings, and um, I did something, I think inspired by Lori on Instagram, I, I think it was her, where she um, blacked the, uh, the borders and the edges uh, on both sides, and I love the way it looks. This is absolutely how it should be printed. I don't want a border. I actually have a trimmed copy of this deck that I, it was, I think, one of the first direct decks I trimmed, and I, I don't super like the way it came out. I screwed up a few times, but it's fine. But I actually really like black borders on this deck. Now, this was a pain in the ass. I'm not going to lie. It took a while. It took about four or five days, because unlike blacking the edges, I used just a Sharpie, um, but you have to be obviously really, you know, I think I took a piece of paper, um, here, I you know, I would take a piece of paper, line it up along the edge, take a thick chisel tip Sharpie, you have to, you, you, and, and for some reason Sharpies are not all created equal, I found. So it has to be like a really juicy <laughs> Sharpie, um, because if you do, if you have a dry one, it, it leaves, um, obviously it leaves, uh, white marks, and, um, it'll, uh, when you try to go over it again, the marker pulls the ink off of it rather than leaving more. So you need a really wet tip Sharpie. So if you do do this, you know, th that's the caveat is you need a really thin straight edge, um, a piece of paper, probably nothing thinner than that. Maybe like a really thin metal ruler would be good. Uh, you need patience. Uh, you need a really juicy Sharpie and you need, um, 
to let everything dry. So, you know, you do one side and you let those cards dry. I normally find with Sharpies when I use them to edge, they're good to go right away. That was not the case with this. And even as I, I go through, I can see a few places where I flung the card down on another card that wasn't dry yet, and I, there's marks. Now, it's, I'm not a perfectionist about stuff like that, but... But having, I, you know, having gone through it, I don't know that I would immediately go through it again. I've never done this to another deck, but having done it, I really love the way it Like, this is absolutely the way this should be printed. If this deck ever comes out in another edition, it needs, it needs to be done there, that way. Um, so my other October decks are not Halloween related, but I only really use them around this time of year, just um, because my mind drifts to things spooky. So this is the Santa Muerta deck. Um, I did a video on this. This was one of my favorite decks of 2017. It was a deck that I did not expect to remotely like. Um, it was Kelly's video where she talked about it and did um, a look at the minors in particular that really numerologically, numerologically felt really good um, and really aligned to things I've adopted over the years. Um, this is one of the first tarot decks in recent memory where the thought and effort that went into the miners was really revolutionary by my estimation. Um, I do not, I know the Oracle is out now. I have not gotten the Oracle. I don't really use Oracle decks, as I just said. So I haven't gotten it. Um, I'm, sh you know, I'm, I, I actually will, once videos start coming out, I'll take a look and see. Um, but it's just, it's not, you know, the Oracle decks don't really call out to me. But I love this particular tarot deck. Um, I love the way it's packaged. I know people had issues with the pre-order of the special edition. I did not engage that. Um, I didn't want the special edition. Um, I like this packaging. Uh, I think this is perfect for a deck uh, that's going to sit on a shelf most of the time. So, big fan of this. Uh, and I, I use it throughout the year, but really principally at this time of year. And then the other one that I'll use a lot throughout the year, I, not even a lot, that I'll use throughout the year, but that I don't use, or that I use mostly around this time of year, is the Bohemian Gothic. Um, <clears throat> again, a deck I was not anticipating liking or wanting. Um, collage decks frequently have a creepiness to them that I dislike, but that really works to the advantage of this one. Um, and, uh, you know, everyone talks about the cardstock on this deck. I love the cardstock on this deck. This is the one that made me sort of give um, a look to the Victorian Romantic, which I also was surprised by how much I like. Again, I don't use it because when I'm reading, you know, most of these decks I don't use a whole lot. When I'm reading for others, I am almost always using a pip deck. Almost always. It's, in a weird way, I think it's become sort of a trademark. Certainly, I think... If I don't use them, people want to know why. So, <laughs> so, you know, when people come to me for readings, and I'm not, you know, I don't have a career as a reader. I, I get occasional clients. Um, I usually, I, I also find pip decks easier to read at this point in my life. Um, so, and I'll show you the ones that are out right now. Um, but I do like my Robert Wright Smith theme decks as well, and so. Um, this is a good one, uh, I really like, and, and particularly at this time of year, and it also just looks really great for photos. So that's the other one. So those are my sort of October decks that get the most love at this time of year, but there are other things that are just out in general that I'm working with, and let's look at something really interesting to me, um, which is that this um, September, August, I took Kelly... Um, Fitzgerald's own class, and out of that um, came a real appreciation for the system, which I have, you know, I am nowhere near mastering. Uh, but in a weird way, it's it's the kinds of readings that I seem to experience using this particular system are not necessarily the kinds of readings I do for clients. Um, and so this is something I probably won't offer, at least not for a while. Um, but I do find it useful. I've done a few, the, you know, I, um, they don't make great photos, so I haven't done a lot of them. I did one or two on Instagram. I did a couple in our, our, you know, group chat, uh, Facebook group for Kelly's class. I really recommend the class if you're interested in this. I know people have 
liked her other classes. I, this is my first class with her, um, but uh, I really enjoyed it. So these are some OM staffs that I got on Etsy, and um, you know they're they're uh, really nice. They're not like if you've seen other folks, Kelly's set, um, Elron set. They have um, really beautiful um, sets with like full bark treated and like this carved moment with the burned oem inside the the um the figure um these are you know these are the trees that they commonly represent um and so there's a delicacy to them for example this one is reed and it really i mean i could snap it just just right now of course i obviously won't do that um but it's just really it's a really interesting and cool way i thought i was going to miss working with cards because i really like cards but um really really liked the class and really really like having these um and i've had some you know i've had some good experiences working through it's a bit more like math to me than other systems because you get you know if you pull three um f figures or f f um fids as i if i remember correctly hopefully i don't embarrass myself if you pull three and you, you know you get a question essentially what i do is i look to the sheet that Kelly made for us, and I say, all right, here's, I don't know their names yet, you know what I mean? So I have to sort of say, okay, what's the, what's the one with the three uh, um, in the middle? So this represents endings and cycles, and then I look at the one that, what's the five slanted ones that represents intensity um, and shame, and what's the one with the five facing left and that's choice and misfortune and then so i write those three keywords down and i sort of sit with them and and tease out of them a sentence that answers the question you know so and and i try to keep the syntax for the most part in order of you know the way i drew them um so theoretically this would be um what did i say this was this was um endings um this is uh, this is actually consequence. Uh, nope, this is, yes it is. See, it's not easy. Passion or consequence. So, it's a passionate ending of um, misfortune. So, something that's been going badly, um, that's been a misfortune, is going to come to an ending, but it's going to be, you know, a really passionate ending. So, anyway, um, I really like that. Also, uh, as she was teaching that class, she found this deck, um, Kelly, on... Uh, on um, um, game, it's not Game Crafters, Make Playing Cards, I think, uh, but it's a really nice OM deck. I, so I took the class, actually, principally, because, this is the back, because I have the Celtic Tree Oracle, um, which I really thought was beautiful, but never used, because I didn't know, even when I got it, what OMs were, and, um, what I found really early in the class was that the correspondences of the authors of that deck didn't really line up with, with, um, the sort of stuff that Kelly was teaching, you know, not bad in one way or another, but I couldn't really use it. Um, uh, and so I, 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 she actually found a deck that you can print yourself, which I got, it's actually, I put it away yesterday to make room for other stuff, but, um, this is actually prettier. So, it, but this has all of the, the ohms on it without a lot of, um, uh, clutter. And uh, so it's easier. Now there are some extra ones that are not in the traditional set. Anyway, Kelly has videos on all this stuff. You should go and watch because I'm definitely a novice. But anyway, this deck um, I got just to... It makes a better picture, certainly. You know, if you use the corresponding staff, it looks really cool. Um, but it also just makes a better picture if I decide to post it on Instagram. Um, so, and also, I oh yeah, Game Crafter. It was Game Crafter. Uh, also, I can't not buy things, so... So that's something interesting that I have not shown before on this channel. Another interesting thing that I have talked about on this channel before, but not well, is is um, is Lenormand. And so I'm taking at the same. This is like a a class time for me. I'm taking Camellia Elias's or Lisa's um, Lenormand class, which I'm really really enjoying a lot, a lot. Um, it's frequently still inscrutable to me, the, <laughs> the cards, you know, but I'm getting better, and she has a very particular system that aligns very closely with the way I read Sibylla, so I will say, you know, I recommend the class. Um, if you are a, a reader 
who has your own system, you probably don't need it. Um, but I still recommend it because I find it can be very liberating. I, I, I will say, though, that if you are um, someone who is, like, pedantically devoted to um, the, the Littermann clichés, as I ungenerously call them, you will not... You, you will probably resist the class quite a bit. But um, I, being the kind of reader I am, adore the way she teaches. I'm a huge fan of hers. I have been for ages. Um, so I've got uh, Ryan Edwards' Maybe Lenormand Out, um, which is the one that she really recommends for class. Um, and then just because, um, you know, I wanted something a little uh, old-fashioned, I also have the Blue Owl, uh, which I I think of the, of the mass market. And this one is hard to get in the United States, evidently. I got it on eBay, new and cheaply, but it had to come from, like, Lithuania or somewhere. Um, but I just like this one, too. For, it's a, you know... Uh, it's uh, it's just something a little different. Um, but the reason the Ryan Edwards one is really good is because, especially with a large, like, grand tableau, you can see exactly what you're looking at, which is really what you need. Um, so I'm taking that class, and I just did a grand tableau yesterday um, and posted it in our study group, and it actually, um, I, I did a decent job. So I felt like, hey, that's awesome, I'm getting it. Who knows if I'm actually getting it, but I'm getting it. So, um, the, um, Maria Celia, Tower de Maria Celia is out. Love this deck. This has actually been the one I've been using for most readings lately. Uh, love the color so much. I have a walkthrough of this. I love the size. I love the way it shuffles. I love everything about it. Um, ooh, can you hear that? Uh, love the backs. I edged them in this sort of wine red, so it feels really nice. Um, nothing I don't love about this deck. Um, the other things that are out are things that have been out for a while. Um, this is the Jacarinza, which again is one of my primary reading decks. When I'm not reading with a pip deck, I'm probably using this one. Um, I love this deck. Uh, you know how I feel about the war card, but I love the rest of it enough that I, I live with it. Um, I'm not, you know, a lot of decks that came into my life that I was not surprising to like, um, that I was not expecting to like, I do like, and this is one of them. So I got this at the Reader's Studio uh, for Benabel. Benabel, well, I, I've talked about this before. Benabel Wen did this amazing workshop, um, uh, and um, I happened to use this for that because all I had with me were Marseille decks or, or similar, and it, it, those just weren't going to work. Um, and so I bought this on a whim, and I just we just fell in love immediately. Um, so my Go to straight up, um, oops, Marseille deck at the moment is the, um, I always have a Marseille deck out. I really like reading with Marseille decks. This is the, um, Tower de Marseille Millennium Edition. And, um, it's, you know, I mean, it's, it's easy to say they all look the same and they, they kind of do. I really like the cardstock on this one. Um, it's really thick, so it's not easy to shuffle, but it's got a great feel, um, the coloration's really nice. There's a sharpness to these images that I really like. Um, so if I'm not using this one, I'm using the CBD. I tend to, for some reason, read m with more clarity on this one. I don't know what it is. You know, I mean, they're, they're really more or less the same images, but I tend to struggle sometimes with the CBD. I don't know why. I really don't. But So this is the um, Tower de Marseille Millennium Edition. It's a limited edition, but it's still available. Um, I also got this at the Reader Studio. But again, when I'm not um, using this, I'm either using the CBD or the uh, Jean Noblet. But this one's been out on my table really all summer. Um, another deck that's really become a favorite was also a surprise because it's a cheap deck. I did a walkthrough of this. Um, I love it. And I don't mean cheap <laughs> as in bad. I just mean it was inexpensive. Uh, this is the Tattoo Tarot Mega Munden. Uh, I adore this deck. Uh, again, it's like, there's some printing issues, some small ones, they don't really bother me. Um, but I love it. I love the cards, I love the art, I love the color scheme, it's so unusual. Um, the cardstock feels really nice. It is, it's large, um, comparatively, it's, well, it's probably tarot card size, but it's, um, uh, the cardstock is thick, um. But it's, I don't find it hard to shuffle, and I really, really enjoy it. Um, looks great in readings, looks great in pictures. So, that's what's out there. Um, 
did a video of this, one of the most popular videos I may have done all year. This is the um, Luminous, what is it? I want to make sure I get the name right. The Luminous, I'm going to go get the box. Yeah, the Luminous Void. It's the Luminous Void Tower. I just want to make sure I got it right. Um, probably my most watched video yet. It's a really cool deck. I haven't used it for reading for anyone else yet, but I really love it. I love the art, love the weirdness of the shape. Weird choice of words, weirdness. Um, it's just, it's just really beautiful. It's such a, it's such a unique deck. And I guess, as I always say, like, I, I'm so tempted to get every deck that comes out, but is it, is it filling a need that I need addressed in my collection is a question that I ask myself a lot. And, um, at least lately. And, uh, this one definitely, there's nothing else like it. So really happy to have it. I love it. Um, People don't like the backs. I really love the backs. I love everything about it, really. Um, you know, again, it's hard to shuffle because of the size and the, um, the cardstock, which is beautiful. It just, it, it grips to itself a little bit. So to do a real good shuffle with this deck, you have to, it's a little bit of a workout, I'll say. It's also heavy, but I mean, it's a small price to pay for something so cool. Um, and then last but not least uh, is Sibylla is probably my bread and butter <laughs> when it comes to readings, when people want readings from me. Lately, they usually want Sibylla readings. This is um, this is the uh, Ilmenagela version of the Vera Sibylla deck. Um, there's a uh, um, uh, La, uh, Los Carabeo version of it, which is cheaper and um, actually has better cardstock. I just like the coloration of this edition a little bit better. And it also has the um, hearts, diamonds, uh, clubs, and spades card association. I don't really use the card associations for Sibylla, but um, they, uh, um, I, just, I just like having those on there. And, and for yes or no questions, those are actually really helpful. So that's what I've got out on my table right now. That's what I've been working with. There's always a Sibylla out because when, lately anyway, I think because of the videos I've made when people want readings from me, it's generally, um, it's generally a Sibylla reading or, um, or a six month tarot forecast. But a lot of the ones I have in my shop, you know, um, Sibylla and the six month Marseille forecast are the two that get the most love. Uh, yeah, so that's what I got. Anything else interesting? I don't think so. Um, I did, I'll do a separate video on it. Um, yeah, that's it. So that's what I got out. Those are the decks that I have been working with, will be working with. Um, and, uh, those are what are out on my table at the moment. I uh, hope this is fun and we'll talk soon.